Hey there everybody, Mr. Marek here. In this video we're going to study um, batteries. We use batteries all the time to create an electric potential difference and so it's kind of important to understand a little bit about how they work and some things that deviate from the ideal. Um, so what batteries do is they create an electric potential difference through a chemical reaction. In chemistry, you may have studied redox reacts, reactions, oxidation reduction reactions. Batteries simply take advantage of that. So kind of drawing what a simple battery schematic might look like. You take a container and you put in an electrolyte solution. That could be a salt, it could be an acid. Electrolyte just means that it can conduct electricity. And then in that solution, <clears throat> you put two different metals. For example, you might use zinc and copper. Now when you put zinc and copper together and you allow them to react, um, electrons will move from the zinc to the copper. And so there's a chemical reaction that involves a transfer of electrons. And that's what oxidation reduction reactions are all about. And so when you have the um, circuit closed, it's like you use wires to close the circuit, then you're going to have a transfer of charge from one to the other, meaning you're going to have an electric current. So the electric current would do something like this. And so you need both parts, you know, your outside um, circuit and then the electrolyte solution in order to make that charge move. And so that's basically the idea behind the battery. This chemical reaction part can get a little bit complicated, so we're just going to leave it as a chemical reaction. Now the thing about chemical reactions is that typically they're slow, especially on the order of, say, an electric charge moving through a circuit. So because chemical reactions are slow, the battery can't provide as much current as we would like it to. The rate at which it can produce current is limited. So as a battery produces more and more current, then the potential difference across the battery decreases. You may have noticed this, if you had your headlights on in your car, and then you start your car up, you may have noticed that your headlights get dimmer. The reason is that when you start the car, you're drawing a very large charge or current from the battery, and that reduces the voltage of the battery. The larger the current gets, starting a car would be a pretty large current, then the lower the potential gets. Eventually, the current would drop off to zero if you draw enough current from the battery. In other words, that chemical reaction is going as fast as it possibly can. It can't go any faster, and so the amount of um, extra current we get out is gone. We can't get any more current out of it. So here's a simple battery. Well, it's not connected to anything. It's got a voltage of 1.5 volts. This would be like a simple D-cell battery that we use in class. Maybe if we draw an amp of current from it, the voltage drops to 1 volt. If we draw 2 amps of current from it, then maybe the voltage drops to half a volt. And then at some point, in this case 3 amps, the voltage would go all the way to zero. So this battery is not capable of providing more than 3 amps of current. So the best way to model this um, a real battery is to assume that the battery has a small resistor inside of it. We call that resistor an internal resistor or internal resistance. So if this is a battery, then we model like it's got a small resistor on the inside of it. Now there's no actual resistor inside a battery, but it behaves as if it did. And so that little resistor, we give the symbol little r. We typically we draw it with just one zigzag instead of several. And that's referred to as the internal resistance of the battery. So the voltage created inside the battery is given the symbol E, the script E. And that would represent the potential of the battery when there's no current drawn from it. And then if you take a voltmeter and you touch it to the terminals on either side, that would give you the actual terminal voltage, the measured potential of the battery when it has a current being drawn from it. So you might be wondering what's with the symbol E. It's a script E, um, and it's short for electromotive force, or EMF. 
Electromotive force is a really, really old and archaic um, term first coined by um, the guy that invented the first battery, Alessandro Volta, in about 1800. And that was still when the terms force and energy and things like that weren't really well defined. And so I really don't know why we still use the term today. It's not a very good term because the battery doesn't provide a force, it provides energy. And so what I want you to kind of think about this um, subscript, or this script E rather, is that it's just the, vo the voltage of the battery when there's no current being drawn from it. We're going to see that later on. Basically, it just represents a voltage. We're going to try not to get too confused by that term because it can be a confusing term. So just remember, it's not a force, it's just a voltage. It's the voltage of the battery when it's not having any current pulled from it. An ideal battery would be a battery that has no internal resistance. So in a lot of AP questions, they'll simplify things and say, an ideal battery has EMF this, whatever. Um, that's what they mean. It just doesn't have an internal resistance. Um, some batteries, really good batteries, can be treated that way. So let's suppose that we have a 9-volt battery that has an internal resistance of 1 ohm. If we measure across the terminals, we call one terminal A and one terminal B, and we measure the voltage, we would measure a voltage of 9 volts. There's no current being drawn from it. The terminal voltage is the same as the EMF. If we connect the same battery to an 8 ohm resistor, now there's current being drawn from it, the terminal voltage is going to drop. So we can find out how big that current is using Ohm's law. Just treat that little internal resistor just like any other resistor. And so this battery has one ampere of current being drawn from it. So one amp through the 8 ohm resistor. That's also one amp through that little resistor R. And so the voltage across that little resistor would be one volt, just using Ohm's law again. And so the terminal voltage of the battery will be 9 volts minus that 1 volt, which would give you a terminal voltage of 8 volts. So if we connected this 9 volt battery to an 8 ohm resistor, we measured the current, excuse me, the uh, voltage across the battery, we would measure something around 8 volts. If we did the same thing, but connected it to a smaller resistor, like a 4 ohm resistor, now we would get a bigger current, in this case it would be 1.8 amperes, meaning that the voltage across the little resistor would be larger, since there's more charge moving through it, which means the terminal voltage of the battery will be smaller. So if we have 1.8 amps of current being drawn from this battery, then the voltage would be 7.2 volts, and so on and so forth. If we kept adding smaller resistors, or resistors in parallel, the terminal voltage would keep on dropping. In general, we can write an equation for the terminal voltage. It's simply the voltage of the battery with nothing attached to it, so that's the E symbol, the EMF, minus the voltage across that little internal resistor. And typically it's written like I times R because those are the things that can be most directly measured. And that's basically just a statement of Kirchhoff's loop rule. Voltages have to add up to zero. So if we've got some voltage across our little resistor, then the voltage across the outside of the battery is going to be smaller. If we were to graph it, we would get a graph that looks something like that. It's linear, and so it'll eventually go to zero. The y-intercept would represent the EMF of the battery. The slope would be the internal resistance. And the x-intercept would tell you the max amount of current that the battery can actually produce. At some point, the voltage is going to drop to zero, and then you can't draw any more current from the battery. And again, there's our equation, and that's just a y equals mx plus b equation, where our y-intercept is right there, our slope is right there, and then we put v on the y-axis, and current on the x-axis. So let's look at a quick example. Um, a battery 
has a terminal voltage of 12 volts when it's not connected to anything. And then we connect it to a resistor, let's say a 5 ohm resistor, and then we measure its voltage again and we find that it's dropped to 8 volts. The question is, what is the internal resistance of this battery? So there's the battery when it's not connected to anything. The terminal voltage is 12 volts, which means the EMF is 12 volts. Here's the same battery connected to that 5 ohm resistor. The EMF is still 12 volts, that's the thing that doesn't change. And that resistor is 5 ohms. And now we know that the terminal voltage is 8 volts. And R, little r, is our question. And so if we knew one of either the voltage or the current through that thing, then we could solve for R. So let's see if we can do that. The voltage across my 5 ohm resistor has to be the same as the terminal voltage of the battery. And so that would be 8 volts. And so if I use Ohm's law, 8 volts over 5 ohms would give me 1.6 amperes. That's going through both of those resistors. And so since I know that the terminal voltage is 8 volts and the EMF is 12, I can just subtract. That will tell me the voltage across that little resistor. So there's 4 volts across that resistor. And then again, using Ohm's law, I can solve for R. So this is voltage over current. Which would give me something like 2.5 ohms. So really, this is just an exercise in using Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's rules. The only thing that's changed is kind of the terminology that we give some of these things, like terminal voltage, internal resistance, EMF, etc., etc. So things to remember. First of all, the EMF is the voltage with no current. It stands for electromotive force, but that's really a bad term, but we need, do need to know what it means. Secondly, the um, terminal voltage is what's measured across the actual terminals of the battery. Typically, we give that the symbol V subscript A, B, or something like that. And then third, little r represents the internal resistance of a battery. And then we have that equation to relate all of our variables together, and all that is the statement of Kirchhoff's rules. So our goal in class next time is going to be to actually measure the internal resistance of an actual battery. So we'll take like one of our D-cell batteries and we'll measure its internal resistance. So that's kind of our goal for next time. I'll see you then. Ta-ta.